What's up, everybody? Just another day in paradise over here. I'm casually wailing over in Landrisser. And I know, I know, you're like, what, casually wailing? Doesn't that kind of like, I mean, wailing is anything but casual, right? Well, in Landrisser, it's really not. Not if you are a day one player. Um, what I mean by this is I pretty much have everything, which in this game, most of the day one players do. So when they drop a collab with these awesome awesome characters uh, here's our collab that's still up and obviously we're running uh, two other banners to help you pick up uh, different units for new players obviously we have Basel in here who's a faction buffer um, Sigma is a faction buffer too so it's an easy way for new players to pick up faction buffers for different groups that they may want to play and we still have what five days left in our collab here. So originally what I did, um, oh Alberto, she's so sweet. So originally what I did is I think I put like, I don't know, like 50 bucks into this collab and I pulled one of each character. Um, what I love about this game is like in, in, in the next week to come, all of the resources that I managed to grind out in this game just by playing it, uh, pretty much just by doing my dailies, my collecting my 50 lapis here and there. Uh, I managed to actually get enough resources to pull um, like three or four dupes at this point. It's It's been absolutely ridiculous. Uh, I just pulled another dupe of Albedo. Um, so we can very easily find these characters and count the shards of them that I have to give you a good idea. <laughs> a good idea of how many of these characters I've pulled. I think I've pulled at least three Albedos, um, and this girl, um, I've pulled at least two of her, right, because I've also been, like, I've also been grinding them out in, uh, in the Bond Realm, so, uh, it's looking pretty awesome over here in Langrisser, uh, I think, I mean, when I can pull copies of these units with just the resources that I've grinded out completely free to play over the past week, Granted, sure, there's been a little bit of luck involved in that, but uh, I can do this in Landgrisser because I know the next banner that's going to have a new character that I'm really going to want is probably like a month or two away. Uh, so casual whaling kind of becomes a thing here, right? Um, you know how much time you have until a new character comes out. And if there's a badass banner up with characters that you absolutely enjoy, which I absolutely do enjoy these characters. They're awesome. Um, you know, you can use the resources that you're grinding out for that week and you can throw them right back into that banner and you can pull a dupe of some of these heroes right um let's see if we look at albedo which we're going to talk about because i've talked about shaltier because she kind of got shafted a little bit she she's just uh not most people's number one choice on this banner albedo is and previously in my last recording i was like man why do people want Albedo so much? Um, we typically have the tank role covered pretty well, so for people to be this happy about a new hero, she would actually really have to bring something to the table. Um, so I held off on really reviewing her because I figured there was just more to her, and it's a good thing I did, right? So um, here she is. Here's my Albedo. She's only at 7,000. I say only because that is nothing to her. We actually look at some of the higher ranked Albedos, and here is the number one Albedo, of course, it is Pete, uh, Pete is a guild member in my guild, Pirate Possum, so uh, shout out to you Pete, the guild was actually named Powerhouse Pete for about a week or so, just, just to pay homage, <laughs> just to give this man the respect that he deserves, because let's look at this. This isn't Pete's first time being featured on my channel either. Um, he also has, like, the record-breaking Angelina, um, one of the two twin sisters from Kakunis. He has one of them decked out to number one, and it's just absolutely ridiculous. The girl is flying around with, like, 1,200 defense or something stupid like that. It's, it's just beyond ridiculous. So let's see what he has going on with Albedo over here. Um, and, then, and then we'll look at mine. We will kind of see the two different paths that people take. Um, he's going with the damage reduction build here. Very solid idea. Right, very solid idea. This girl, um, 
she's she's going to have a ton of hit points and stats. Giving her some more damage reduction is just always a good idea. I mean, she is going to be a tank through and through. Um, she's going to retaliate with a very nasty um, stat because she's using her defense as her attack. Uh, so I'm sure this this Albedo retaliates with 1,800 attack. <laughs> Plus she gets... I'm sure, like, what, 70, 70%, percent 75% more damage. Yeah. Okay, your attack gets replaced with 1. times 1.6 times defense. And you increase your damage dealt by 75%. Okay, so when, the, when she's, like, decked out to 6-star, like, this ability is up here uh, with, I dare say, Ledin. Right? Ledin has... An ability where when he retaliates, he gets two attacks, right? And Ledin can crank out his attack to almost 2,000. I've seen it very easily done. Um, so then you attack him, and he gets to retaliate twice with his 2,000 attack. And he can absolutely wreck units. But you do have to trick them into attacking you. And knowing, you know, um, there's ways around that. You can push Ledin away. You can block his movement so he can't actually guard for people. Um... There's, there's units that can switch places with other units. You can use Freak to displace units um, and move them around and still kind of keep her out of danger if you play it right. Um, so there's there's ways around dealing with a very nasty tank. Uh, you know, there's obviously always magic damage as well. Uh, but when you need a tank there and you know there's a bunch of troops coming to attack you in close quarters combat um man leaden has just been one of the best choices all over this game you see leaden all over the place uh, and rightfully so um this is like the first character that i've actually seen that is kind of gunning for that throne okay um and she has she definitely has some advantages too um the polar opposite of leaden First of all, when we're talking about classes, because Leaden can be a uh, a priest class tank, which means he is going to absolutely destroy uh, demons, like the demon class. Uh, is it a class? Is it a class? Yeah, I would call it a class. Uh, Leaden will absolutely destroy demons because he gets a huge damage increase to that, and he's going to take less damage from them. Um, that has just always been one of the good things about uh, Leaden being a priest is that it's hard to find something that's strong against that because priest, uh, the, the holy class and the demon class just kind of cancel each other out, which leaves cavalry, infantry, and lancers, they're not strong or weak to any of those, which is why it's always been a good option for Leaden to be a priest class because then nobody is actually strong against him. He's going to be able to take that hit and kind of stay alive. Speaking of staying alive, that is one thing that this girl gets to do. She does get to come back to life uh, with her S3. So, she is the polar opposite of Leiden. She does not get to be a priest class. What this girl actually gets to do... What is that? Okay. So what this girl actually gets to do is be a demon class. And the demon class in this game... They have the most jack stats, so you're going to have some of the highest stats, and she can already convert her defense into her attack, and she can get an increase in damage, right? Um, so that speaks for itself. And speaking of Pete's build here, um, pretty much he has put steel on her, so she's going to have 10% damage reduction. Um, part of her talent here is when a friendly unit is within two blocks, damage taken is reduced by 25%. Because really think about that, that 25% stacks up with the 10% that he has. So now you have 35% damage reduction to all types of damage, okay? It, it doesn't matter if you're attacked close quarters or if a mage comes up to you and blasts you, it doesn't matter. You're still going to shave off 35% of the damage um, and this girl's probably going to survive just because she has so many hit points and she's fairly tough um, so even if she doesn't she does get to come back to life once which is very nice and it is very nice to see her jacked out at 8214 power that's absurd 
The Blood Pact is a great, great item for her because it's going to give her, you know, that 15% hit points and grants immunity to, immunity to effects that prevent healing or buffed. So that's pretty cool because and that, that's just awesome. Not only is that feeding into her massive hit point pool, um, it's also making her un, unbuffable, whatever. So all in all, you're going to see a lot of blood packs on this character. Um, and for good reason, right? I personally did not choose to go the blood pack way. Um, there's a lot of them that did, and it makes sense. Uh, but I was actually looking for something to uh, increase her defense. Um, there's also a swordsmith metal that's going to make her immune to fixed damage. That could help as well. Uh, I guess it depends on what you are running this girl through. Let's see. Uh, some of these other builds... Um, and this is cool. This is what I dig. Um, you are actually seeing a variation in this character. With a lot of characters, that is not the case. You are going to see all top 10, top 20 of them with the same rune set. So this is just like music to my ears. If we actually look at these rune sets, they actually vary greatly. To me, that's a sign of a great character because you can just do so much with them. Um, all of these characters are going to do the same, but they're going to function different. Uh, Agblade here, uh, a major power player on this server, and an avid freak user. Uh, 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 this guy told me he likes using freak, and I agree with him. Freak's an awesome character to play. So uh, I did get a chance to talk to him for a little bit, and he did say he, he likes running freak. So um, he has went with the thorns build here, and this guy's notorious. Uh, Agblade, he's pretty much, he's pretty notorious on our server, he has all of the high power characters, like, just about any character, he's gonna come in top 5, um, just from what I've seen on this server, interesting what he did here, because, uh, just like Pete, we're going for a damage reduction build, uh, Fury of Tear is absolutely great on this character, uh, and a lot of people put Alua's Battle Armor on her, um, this is going to give her a 30% chance to lower damage taken by unit. Um, this is for ranged attacks. So, yeah, it's a good armor option to keep for this character, especially if you're going to go tank something that there's going to be a ton of ranged attacks that you're taking. Uh, this armor can make a huge difference. Let's see, what did Pete use? Did he go with the same thing? Yeah, no surprise there. Okay. What are some other options? Here we went with Anne's armor. Um, the reason you would want to go with Anne's armor is because it gives you defense. Remember, this girl takes defense and makes it her attack. So, uh, you know, defense is always going to be solid. Anne's armor is always just going to be a solid choice for this girl's stats that she wants. All right? Let's see. Here we go. Number five. Okay. Um, and as far as, like, her headpiece... Fury of Tear is going to just be the best choice, hands down. Um, this girl's really going to be able to make use of this thing. Uh, after taking action, if you haven't dealt damage, or if you've used like a tank ability, uh, your skill damage is increased by 10%, and counter attack damage is increased by 10% for one turn. So this girl, having 10% more to her counter attack damage, she's already getting a 75% damage bonus from her talent. That's going to jack her up to 85% more damage, and she's going to have like a 2,000 attack stat when she's defending. So, uh, not a big surprise there why so many people choose Tear Helm for this girl. Um, I'm actually tempted to get another Tear Helm myself. Like, like I bought that $20 bundle a long time ago, and I still have not decided exactly which item I want to go for, and like these. Fury of Tear Helms, they're so clutch. Like, you need them all over the place just because they're so good. But at the same time, uh, I'm giving up an accessory, and those are rare. They're, like, really rare. They're hard to get, so I could just go in there and pick any accessory I want. I don't know. You guys can leave me a comment. Let me know what you did if you ended up buying that item bundle set for 20 bucks. Um, because Fury of Tear, uh, I've talked to a few people, and... It's, it's definitely up there, because so many heroes can make such good use of this. Right? I even have my Sakura running around with a Fury of Tear Helm. So, and she's like an all-offensive troop. 
But back to Albedo, I like it. I'm seeing variation in, in gear and rune sets. So we talked about Pete's rune set and what, what it's really doing. Uh, it, also, it also works well with her S3. This is the one thing I have not gotten for this girl yet, and I can't wait. Um, so this girl's S3, um, it has a passive ability that lets her come back to life. Um, that speaks for itself. It's awesome. When you activate it, uh, it turns into like, it replaces her tank ability. So it takes all damage from friendly units within two blocks and gains. Oh man, Tremishguish. Chance to be critically hit reduced by 30%, which is great. When forced into battle, has a 30% chance to trigger all damage taken by this unit is reduced by 50%. Now that's effing insane. And that is why people are trying to bank off of a damage reduction build. Uh, because pretty much you're going to be standing around with 35% damage reduction. And then when you activate this, uh, that 35% damage reduction pretty much turns into 85% damage reduction when this procs. And, I mean, she's a tank, so she can fend off, like, 20 attacks in a turn if that's how it plays out. And if this ability is up if, for a long time, right, and she can negate a lot of hits, uh, she can take a lot of attacks and have a chance to have incredibly high damage reduction applied to everything that she's taking. And you can just kind of add that up with the damage reduction from the steel rune set and this girl just becomes a nightmare to kill. How are you going to kill her? This is also, hold on. Yeah, this is non <laughs> non-discriminatory damage. The damage reduction. All right. Uh, when forced into battle has a 30% chance to trigger all damage is all damage taken. It's not physical. It's not magic, which means yeah, she's gonna, she can have like 85% damage reduction against a mage or just anybody trying to blast her with anything, okay? So that uh, mixed with her ability to be a demon and just have monster-ass stats and have a monster defense and use that defense as an attack and just kind of function the same way that Leiden kind of functions with his counterattack. Uh, I can totally see why this girl uh, <laughs> is worth her weight in salt. Um, I can totally see why people were so hyped for this character. Like Personally, for me, I actually had to see it kind of come together. I, I held off on actually doing a review on Albedo. She is a triple S character. She is up there, but I had to actually see it for myself. Um, and that, you know, that took me getting her to like 7,000 power, and I'm starting to actually see how potent this girl is, it's its beyond belief, and knowing that, I mean, her total power could still go up by another thousand, right, like, I, she's already on the server at, what, what was it, 8,400 power, so it's nice to see a character this strong, knowing uh, how much room you have to improve on, right, like, I know I can get her to 8,000 power, um, and personally, for the build that I put on her, I'm, I'm actually going to play this out and see how this build does. Uh, I'm one of the few people that put the Holy Ark on her so I can reflect damage. Um, the same thing with the thorns that I put on her, right? Thorns are just good. They're going to give her hit points, which is great. And you have a chance to reflect damage taken. Um, so the thorns along with the Holy Ark, along with her retaliating with, you know, 1800 attack, it gets the job done. I'll, I'll be perfectly honest with you. It gets the job done and she still gets to apply this uh, black guard Aegis, uh, she gets to apply this fixed damage, um, and that's actually been pretty decent against like little little skeleton mages and archers that are just there to kind of pester you. She can actually get some pretty good damage in on them. Um, a lot of times, she can actually out damage them because her defense is so high. Um, unless they're hitting her for fixed damage, they're barely scratching her, and then at least she gets to retaliate with this fixed damage thing. I mean, I dig it. I think it's pretty cool. Uh, obviously, I'm going to get her 3C, and I'm just going to replace Walls of Jericho with it. And she's just built easy to make like that. Um, I cannot wait to run her new guard ability and still be able to blink, uh, bring Black Guardian Aegis and uh, Impure Desire. Um... I think it's just going to make her a monster. <laughs> so, 
Uh, that's what I have to say about Albedo. She's definitely worth it as a character. This banner is still up for five days, but I could totally see. Uh, the other thing is, too, uh, her troops. Okay, I'm, I'm actually excited because she actually gets to use these, uh, these crystal soldiers, these crystal golems. They are absolutely badass, and they're phenomenal against magic. Right, it's it's just so good to have an option like this. They, they, uh, let's see, they restore their own health, which is phenomenal for keeping themselves healed, which is just really useful to a tank to be able to heal their own troops up all the time. Uh, when forced into battle with magic attacks, uh, unit reflects, and that goes up to thirty percent of the damage received. So that is awesome. The troops are going to be reflecting. Um, she has thorns on her. So she can reflect, right? Um, whether it's magic damage or uh, physical damage. Um, and I believe the Holy Ark only works on melee attacks. So I'm going to get a little bit more reflection off of melee attacks. Uh, but this girl is still going to reflect plenty against mages. Um, and she's also going to be able to hit them with that fixed damage. So she's just been absolutely wonderful for me. I, I dig the skin. I dig everything. Um, and, and really in my personal packing order, I was going to rate this girl lower than Shaltar, Shaltir. Um, like I said, I just don't feel like this girl got the props that she really deserves. Um, I kind of get it. She's really easy to play. Um, and she can, she can proc act again very easily and just be a very potent force. She does get knocked down a peg or two when she's not at full health. She loses a lot of her stats. Um, especially if you have full moon on her, which I do. Uh, but when she's at full health, she almost seems unstoppable. And her ability to act again, um, the reason I'm bringing this up is because this is what I had to compare to, you know? And I'm sitting here like, man, that girl's bringing a lot to the table. What's Albedo doing, right? Like, what is she doing as a tank? Um, she does a lot for a tank, okay? This this literally is, you know, dare I say it, let in... 2.0 or 1.5 uh, she is pretty damn nasty and she should be she's a limited character that just got released um, totally worth it um, and I dig her flair so I'm gonna leave it at that this banner is still up for five days um, if you just tuned in both of these girls are worth getting they will carry your account as a new player I can tell you that right now they will um, they will most definitely carry your account and they will do everything for you so five days, uh, and welcome to Landgrisser. If you are new, uh, this is this is what you have to expect, pretty much, right? You collect the heroes that you want, and if you miss a banner, don't worry. They're always bringing heroes back. Um, these banners are the ones that I pretty much target because they're limited banners, and it's not too bad. Like Landgrisser gives us space to breathe, right? I've never been, str I've never seen like back to back to back limited banners in this game they make everything extremely fair you know what to expect and you know what's coming um and personally that's what i would do i, I would come in here if i really wanted to play this game especially with one of these collab sets of characters i would just work on those characters um all of the non-limited characters you're going to get all these characters just out of dumb luck anyway along the way i would really just save up for these uh limited banners when they drop because a lot of times they're going to drop these characters that are special in a way or they just have really cranked out power. Uh, and uh, that's that's probably the best bet uh, that most free-to-play uh, or free-to-play-ish players have is just to save up for these specialty banners. Um, it's That's what I've always aimed at doing and it's always served me well, right? I've, I, I do some pulls along the way with when new characters come out, but I typically hold out. Um, unless they're a limited character, uh, then I'll go in on that. And luckily for us, you know, Langrisser only does that once every few months, so it gives us plenty of time to breathe. <laughs> Hopefully you can even keep up on your other gotchas. But this is pretty much what I think about Albedo and why she is so cranked out and dangerous um, and why she's such a good pick for anybody uh, who's trying to roll a new account now because this collab has brought quite a few new people to the game, so... I hope these guides help. Um, if you actually look, um, you go into the channel and you actually look up the Langris or playlist, there should be plenty of old vids too that explain how troops work, how building your troops help, 
and just the overall gist of things of how you should proceed in, you know, powering yourself up, uh, up into the land grisser meta that we currently have. Um, a lot of that advice, uh, it's still just as good as it was back then. So if you're new to the game, I highly encourage you check out some of the older vids I did. You might have questions about things and those things have already been answered. So uh, everybody have an awesome day. Peace.